Hello folks, welcome to the channel. Hope you're all keeping well. Today we are not in the man cave, we are out in the man field. So today we're going to be talking about this, the all new from May 2023 Suzuki GSX-8S. And that is a mouthful and a half. So if you're interested in one of these, stick around. I've made a load of notes and I'll tell you what you need to know about this new little Suzuki middleweight naked bike and if I think it's any good or not, and then we'll go through all the specs, and then we'll go out for a run. But before we dive into the bike and reading my notes, I just want to say a big thank you to InMotion for letting me ride this bike. So if you're in the area, just pop down to the InMotion. They are the local Suzuki dealer and a big shout out to Danny. So without further ado, let's crack on and dive into the specs. So the Suzuki GSX 8S, I'm just going to call it a GS. It was launched in May 2023. So there have been quite a few reviews already, but it's my turn to do one, or shall we say a first ride impressions review and already it has won Motorcycle News' Naked Bike of the Year 2023. Main competitors are then, uh, there'd be quite a few bikes out there, but I would say it's going to be the Honda Hornet, the CB750, KTM 790 Duke, and then finally the good old MT07 from Yamaha. So the recommended retail price for this is $7,900 and 99 pounds if we compare it to the bikes i've just spoken about then the honda is 6999 so that's a thousand pounds cheaper the ktm is 7999 so it's exactly the same price as this and coming in last uh, but not least is the yamaha and that's 7500 and 10 pounds so all these bikes are fabulous bikes so basically it's you know do you like porsche do you like ferrari do you like aston martin so everybody's got their preference some people will love this bike some people will love the honda hornet so the only thing you need to do is just watch the videos and then go down to your local dealer take one out for a demo and you'll be blown away by any of these bikes i'm five foot nine 85 kilos breathing in a little bit with my tight t-shirt so let's just sit on the bike and how does that feel then so basically yeah i can flat foot it so five foot nine 32 inch seam and yeah i've got a bend in the knees and i'm flat footing it so the bike should fit a lot of people i suspect even those down to five foot six or something so i don't know if there's a lowered seat i don't think there is i've looked at the accessories i didn't see one but yeah it's a fairly lowish bike at a seat height of 810 millimeters so it should fit a lot of people uh, weight wise this is 202 kilograms that's curb weight that's the wet weight ready to go and if we just compare it just to one of those bikes i've just mentioned let's compare it to the honda because i think that's what its main competitor it, competitor is so the honda comes in about 10 kilos lighter that's 190 kilos uh, the seat height is 810 mil on this one which is 31.9 inches and on the honda it's 795 millimeters so the honda is a little bit uh, lower as well i've already done a, a first impressions ride on the honda so if you want to click up here go and have a look at that the wheelbase on this one is uh, 1465 millimeters and the honda hornet is just a little bit uh, of a shorter wheelbase that's uh, 1420 mils so the honda itself is about 45 mils shorter shall we say uh, than the suzuki engine wise then this has got a 776 cc engine so this is an all new engine it's an all new frame and everything for suzuki and that bangs out with the parallel twin and that's a 270 degree crank so it gives you the same uh, characteristics as a v-twin does and that's banging out 80 horsepower or 82 ps if you're european and that's at 8500 revs so the honda hornet that is 755 cc so slightly down on cc but it's slightly up on the horsepower so that's 10 horsepower more and that's 90 horsepower and in relation to the torque all these bikes are absolutely brilliant uh, when it comes to the size of the engine to the amount of torque they produce so this one produces 78 newton meters of torque at 6800 revs which is about old school 60.2 foot pounds or pounds foot however you want to call it and the honda is slightly down on the torque that's 74 
newton meters so they're all pretty much of a muchness goes to say this engine is water cooled double overhead cam so basically the thing to take away comparing the suzuki to the honda is this weighs 10 kilograms more and it has got 10 horsepower less top speed of the bike if you want to go somewhere where there is no speed limit or go to a racing track apparently this will do about 125 miles an hour so suspension and wheels then so the front wheel and the rear wheel they are both 17 inch wheels and the front is a 120 70 and the rear is a 180 55 and that rear wheel is wider than the Honda Hornet and I think that just makes this thing a little bit more stable certainly in a straight line it's got a longer wheelbase this bike just seems to be a little bit less twitchy and a little bit more stable and I think that's down to the size of the rear tyre and a combination of that and the wheelbase. Stopping power wise we've got 310 millimeter discs on the front and they are uh, stopped through Nissan brake calipers and there's non-adjustable front forks and they are from KYB. A very nice setup really and as I said I'm 85 kilos so I'm not a a heavy weight or a light weight. I'm an average kind of chap really and so there's no no adjustments on the front suspension and the rear suspension via a cam adjuster you can adjust the preload only and the rear brake is just a Nissan brake caliper as well so tyres wise the bike is wearing a set of uh, Dunlop uh, Road Sport 2s and I believe these have been specifically made for the Suzuki so the bike itself is an all new bike right from the ground upwards with the engine and the frame. So we've got a steel frame and then we've got a steel subframe at the back and they've just left the steel subframe exposed, I guess, just to give you a bit more uh, kind of feeling to the bike. So I think the bike is quite a pretty looking bike. <laughs> it comes in three colors. I'm just going to call them black, white and blue. So colorways, yeah, I think they're, um, yeah, they look pretty good, but my preference would be this one because I like the stealthy look, basically. Seat height, we've already touched on that. That's 810 millimeters. Fuel-wise, so we've got a 14 litre tank and allegedly it does 23.8 kilometers per litre, if you believe any of that. If you've got one of these folks, please make any comments in the comment section down below. That goes through out the video, because I know what it's like. If you've got a bike, you like to watch videos about your bike. So if you're watching this and you've got the bike, make some comments down below. You do the maths on that, 208 miles on that 14 litre tank. Lights wise then, so we've got LED headlights and I think they look quite swanky actually, the, uh, the way that they're stacked above each other. I quite like that. And then we've, sadly, we've got the old bulbs for the indicators and I believe also, let me have a look for the, I'm not sure about the tail light section actually, I think that might be LED, but certainly the indicators, they are the old <laughs> twist in bulbs. But if you want to spend some more money, 238, 238, 36 pounds then you can go for the optional led indicators stuff as well but that's all on the suzuki website so as we work up the bike then we've got a really nice five inch tft and in the short distance i've ridden this which is only about eight or nine miles from the dealership to here i've got to say that that tft is a really nice tft to watch quite a bit of information on there but it's really easy to pick out the relevant information for you and what will they display on there so it has a quick shifter we'll come to that shortly so it lets you know if the quick shifter is uh, has been selected on or off tells you what gear you're in tells you the traction control and the riding mode again we'll come to that shortly and then there's a separate line uh, which is sort of uh, custom customizable for the rider and on that line you can put things like uh, dual trip meters uh, range etc and uh, coolant temperature and that kind of stuff so it is sort of semi-programmable and yeah I, I think that they've done a cracking job with that five inch tft and also in the top right hand corner it tells you what time it is so what else does the bike come with then so it doesn't come with any usb plug-in so basically you have to pay 46 quid uh, via the uh, suzuki uh, <laughs> optional accessories and then it will sit down here on the left hand side of the headlight indicator area and if you want to put a little screen on the front here i've just had a look at some of the accessories but just, just go to the suzuki website and check them all out you can put a little screen on here but i'm sure there's going to be other companies already making aftermarket stuff for this bike uh, yeah a little screen on there and that will cost you 115 pounds 
as we work our way back, I spoke to uh, Danny before I uh, rode off on the bike. I said, does, does this come with a pillion seat? And apparently it does. So they'll have that upstairs somewhere. So at the moment, it's just got this sort of uh, rear cover. And then under here, there's a very, very small bit of storage, enough for you to put a packet of polos maybe, and possibly uh, a plug and go kit or something like that. Um, but yeah, there's not much storage under there. And I think to take the front seat off, you have to resort to getting your toolkit out. So in relation to the handlebar controls, I think Suzuki have done a really nice job in here. Very, very nice and simple, clutter free. So it's a good job Suzuki, I like what you've done there. The clutch lever, it's a cable clutch, it's non-adjustable. And then the front brake lever, it's got five levels of span adjustment. I've got sort of dinky, straight middle of the range kind of hands. Uh, and yeah, I can get a nice riding position on the bike. So one thing I would have liked to have seen is actually on the wheels. I'd have liked to have seen a 90 degree uh, valve to put air into the tires, but uh, maybe that will come, come out on, a, on another model. But yeah, so the valves on the tires, they're just the straight, the straight standard uh, valves that we've seen for years on motorbikes. So on the back of the bike that we've already said, we've got the rear seat cowl here. And then if you put the pillion seat on, you've already got the pillion seat foot pegs attached to the bike. And the good thing is, You've got some little hooks on here. So if you want to carry a sports bag or whatever with that pillion seat on, then you can use a bungee cord or whatever to secure that to the back of the bike. So that's quite a nice little touch that, those little uh, hooks on here. Well done, Suzuki, I like that. So this bike is 7,999 pounds. I think that's a, a really good price for a bike. I know the Honda undercuts it by about a thousand pounds, but there are some things that the Honda hasn't got that this has got. But I think at the end of the day, you either like this bike or you like the Honda or you prefer the Honda or you prefer the Suzuki. So get down to your dealer and go and try one out. So let's dive into electronics then. So I've got a list. Suzuki use lots of acronyms, you know, so I'm not going to go into that. Here's some of them on the screen, but yeah, I'm going to keep it very simple because I'm a simple kind of chap. So on the engine wise, so we've got a slipper clutch and then we've got a quick shifter. So you can go up the box and down the box and you can switch the quick shifter on or off, that uh, comes part, part of the £7,999. So uh, yeah, and it's a, it's a quite a nice quick shifter actually. So you've got ABS front and rear and that is non-switchable. So it's uh, on all the time, you can't switch it off. There is no IMU, that's one of those lean sensitive electronic gyroscopes. So the ABS is a basic ABS, S-I-R-S. This is one of those acronyms which stands for Suzuki's Intelligent Ride System and then there's a load of bump beneath it. So basically you've got riding modes for the engine. So uh, some, some manufacturers call it sport road, street or rain and Suzuki call it A, B and C. A for active, which is like what when you're on it. B for basic, which is like your road mode. And uh, both the active and the basic still have the full power. So you can still get the full beans out of the engine. And you have C for comfort or old school rain mode and there is a significant difference between the modes uh, even in the short distance that i've been riding the bike so so you've got three uh, power modes or riding modes for the bike so there is no cruise control and it's a ride by wire throttle and traction control we've got four levels of traction control basically level one which is the minimal amount of uh, intrusion and then we have level two and then level three which is like the safest uh, the safest level of traction control and then we have off so if you switch the traction control off i guess you can loft the front wheel in the air if that's your kind of thing and i did have a ktm 890r i just recently got rid of it and that had what suzuki call uh, a quick let me see what they call it they call it a quick start system so like the ktm basically turn the ignition on you just press the button, you can release the hand, and then that will start the engine up through a start sequence. So you don't have to keep your finger pressed on the button. So I quite like that system. And then they also have what they call a low RPM assist, which basically means it's, it's kind of an anti-stall system. So if you're just moving off from the line, then it just does something with the revs to hopefully not cause you to stall or reduce the risk of you stalling the bike. Certainly if you're a newbie to this kind of bike. So that's all the specifications and let's talk about the warranty. So this bike comes with a three year warranty. It's extendable kind of to seven years, but that's only if you take the bike to an approved Suzuki dealer 
Uh, I don't know how it works, go and check the website out, but then apparently the warranty is, is continues all the way up to year seven or something like that. Service intervals, they're every 3,750 miles or 12 months, which is ever the, whichever is the sooner. So maybe slightly lower than, than other manufacturers, but how many miles you're gonna do a year? And then you, it comes with one year AA assistance. So basically if you're in the UK, you can ride around the UK and if you have a problem with the bike, they will get you home. And if you go away to Europe, uh, that won't be the case. You have to go to the website and get a separate quote for uh, European wide recovery, if that makes sense. Uh, accessory wise, tons of accessories on the Suzuki website. I think the bike really looks smart. I would sort of do away with the mirrors and put some bar end mirrors on it. And I would get rid of the very nice knot tail unit here. And I would go to Evotech. I've used their stuff before, very nice stuff. And they do a nice tail tidy. I like the stealth color, uh, but some might like the white, some might like the blue. Not too keen on the name. It is a bit of a mouthful. I'm just going to call it the GS. And I think they've done a really nice job. And yeah, and it rides really well, as you'll find out very soon. And what else is there to say about it? I don't think there's anything else other than the exhaust. It's a two into one exhaust, as you can see down here. And it sounds very inoffensive. It's got a nice tone to it. We'll start it up very shortly and then we'll take the bike out on the road. How does that sound, folks? So let's just fire it up. Single press of the start button and then you can release the button. And there we go. I think it sounds pretty good. Very inoffensive, but it's got a bit of a meaty sound to it. So I think what we'll do now, don our kit and go out on the road. Okay, folks, so here we are then out and about on the GS, however you want to call it. I have to say, I haven't ridden this bike for many miles, but if I was to be asked now, which bike do I prefer, whether it be the CB750 Hornet or the Suzuki, and I was paying my own money, I think, <laughs> I've got to say, if I'm being brutally honest, I think I'd chuck my money down on this. That might be against popular opinions, but I have to say, I think this is, for me, I think this is a nicer bike for me. Uh, five foot nine, 32 inch leg, and the whole bike, it just feels a little bit bigger than the Hornet. Maybe the bars are a little bit wider, I'm not sure, but the whole, the whole thing just, for me, feels more comfortable and with that slightly longer wheelbase and that fatter rear tyre it's just less twitchy and that less twitchiness just makes the whole riding experience more pleasurable so yeah I don't feel so so nervous on it uh, than compared to the Honda but yeah this bike folks I really like it it's a nice machine so who is it aimed at then well 80 horsepower back in the day if you said you had a bike that had 80 horsepower I think your mates in the bar drinking their pints would go, oh, my bike's got more horsepower than that. But folks, today, if you've been away from riding for a long time, you're looking at coming back into riding, or you're looking at moving up from a 125, getting an A2 class license, which this bike can do, as can a lot of the other bikes, then I think you're gonna be very surprised at what this bike has got to offer. Although it's only got you know, 80 horsepower, the way it uses it, you, you put my teeth back in, the way it uses it with that 270 degree uh, crank, you've just got bags of torque from low down. And if we're all being honest, you know, with all the speed cameras and everything out there today and all the speed checks, if you've got a four stroke, four stroke, <laughs> four cylinder screaming sports bike, the temptation is to nail it, to get into where the power is high at the rev range, but with a lot of these mid, mid size uh, super naked or naked that are out and about, oh chaps, that are out and about on the road now. I mean, these are just brilliant. These are what I would say are real world bikes. You know, this is 80 horsepower, very nice. I've got it in level A, which is sport mode, active mode, as Suzuki call it. And I've got the traction control on level one, which is the least amount of intrusion and then I can switch off will be the next one. And I've got to say, it's just, it just steers really well. Okay, for 
7999 the suspension is non-adjustable but at my weight I've got no issues with it whatsoever and it just turns in really nicely yeah no complaints with it whatsoever nice quiet ride exhaust is not offensive pleasant tone to it but it's really nice it's it's just a nice bike I think Suzuki in bringing this brand new bike to you guys I mean I think they're on to a winner here and it will be an injustice if it doesn't sell in bucket loads uh, I mean the the power from this 80 horsepower uh, engine is just there we go third gear roll it on it's just really nice very little vibration you know you can then you can have a lot of fun with this a lot of fun and you've got the quick shifter and the quick shifter is really nice I'm just going to talk about that quick, quick shifter I had one on my 890R and it was crap if I'm being perfectly honest and ha having read a little bit on the uh, big world wide web last night before I rode this bike out it seems to be that the quick shifter it says something about I'm sure I read something about you've got to preload it so what I have been doing and it seems to work really well is just with the foot just been putting a little bit of pressure on the foot on the gear shift and then when I want to change then just squeezing it up so preload the, the gear shift and it's buttery smooth whereas when I first got the bike I was sort of like everybody else does just smashing the old gear shift and it was a little bit clunky but if you preload it it is absolutely buttery smooth again good job Suzuki and the handling really nice I mean you've done a really good job Suzuki it's just a I think it's um, yeah I think it deserves deserve to sell more than the Honda Hornet yeah, yeah that's <laughs> and I've only literally done about 20 miles on the bike but you know when a bike feels right for you that's why you have to go and test ride all these bikes because until you get on the bike sit there does it work for you the the actual the size of the machine am I comfortable on it you might end up going with oh everybody recommends this bike you get on it and you just think it's a pile of poo because it you can't get comfortable on it but I really like this so from a comfort point of view this bike I think is for me at five foot nine is really nice and the horn yep <laughs> two penny horn bit of a murky day today the brakes yeah those Nissan brakes nice and progressive and what I have noticed is there's not too much in the way of dive from those non-adjustable front forks you know and it does it does handle and the good thing if you've never used a quick shifter before the good thing about them is you got both your hands on the handlebars steering the bike so you're not panicking about you know I've got one hand off the bars or fingers off the bars changing gear kind of thing so you can concentrate on the task in hand on the downshift though it's not as good as the upshift but I think the the secret to the success of the quick shifter is just preloading that gear shifter and yeah I don't know the spikes only at about 160 miles so maybe it's got to bed itself in oh everybody's out today everybody's out but it really is a a lovely bike so suspension wise it's nice the engine that engine is amazing uh, from zero to sort of just under 5,000 revs it's quite docile and this is in active mode it's quite a docile fairly placid machine and anybody can ride it so whether you're new to motorcycling or you're coming back into it after a while don't be put off by 80 horsepower and um, these bikes are I would be happy with this in my garage I wouldn't have any issues with it at all uh, whatsoever whatsoever I love the switch gear very minimalistic unlike some bikes and then if you want to change the traction control or the uh, power levels then you just press the mode button press the mode button there you go traction control and then you just scroll there so I've put the traction control off so technically I think you could sort of pop a pop the old wheelie if you wanted to and then we've got the TC uh, warning light on in uh, amber and then I could sc scroll through again and go to level three and then back to level one and then press the mode button again and then I can just change the mode so you can do, do all this on the fly very simple to do and then just scroll up or down ABC C is comfort which is 
off the throttle just clear all that so this is in C mode yeah so again if you're new to the bike and you're just a bit weary of the power you know or it's raining then leave it in C mode you know and even that full gas there it's a it's a, a lot different in the power delivery so but that's not for me I like to go full beans so you've got to close the throttle okay so you have to close the throttle for it to accept it so back into A mode there we go that's the mode I like to be in but yeah it's really nice so switch gears good mirrors fine very little vibration there uh, spoken about the quick shifter yeah uh, good on the way up just preload it and a bit clunky on the way down brakes are really good very little dive yeah it's just really nice comfort wise again put some comments in the comment section down below folks because I'm not on the bike for very long I'll be riding back to the dealership very soon but comfort wise I think for me it fits me really well so I don't think I'd have any issues with riding it for several hours at a time with that 203 or 4 mile range on the tank whatever it was but it's just like these all these naked bikes all these twin cylinder bikes they've got so much power usable power in the real world not sort of barroom talk yeah very usable and you're not going to scare yourself with this and if you want it to lift its skirt up and start running <laughs> it certainly can do that the 5 inch TFT is very nice everything you need to know there uh, speed gear selector fuel level and that blocky kind of system and then you've got an information bar down the bottom here it's just a good bike and the overall quality I mean the the grey finish on these plastics on here I'm not sure how susceptible they're going to be to getting scratched you know I'd much rather see a, a hard plastic glossy kind of lacquered finish I think these might scratch uh, fairly easily so maybe that's where they saved a little bit of money and on the suspension as well but it is you know it is a thousand pounds more than the Honda the Honda doesn't have the quick shifter and this one does and this one's got an extra year's warranty with it so you know horses for courses really but the low down grunt from the engine is just quite impressive actually I'm good yeah yeah I'm just doing, I'm just doing some videos for my YouTube channel I'm just taking this out for a demo thanks for stopping thoughts on my first impression ride of this the Suzuki GSX 8S which is still a bit of a mouthful I really like the bike 80 horsepower don't be swayed by that if you're into your big horsepower take one of these out for rides you'll be very very impressed and that engine well that engine is is very very good 80 horsepower yeah up to four and a half thousand revs ish um, yeah it's nice and yeah, nice and benign really and then you get to the to 5,000 and then everything happens and it turns into a little bit of a beast shall we say I've really enjoyed it it's a cracking little bike so I would suggest folks go down to your local dealer and take one out so here I am back at my in motion dealer I'm going to put it up in the front here and then yeah thank you very much folks so pop down to your local Suzuki dealer and go and take one of these Suzuki 800s out for a run. Really, really impressive. Cheerio for now. Take care. Do all that YouTube stuff. See you again soon. Bye. Good bike. And the side stand is easy to reach with the, uh, the ball on the end of it. That's nice. Cheerio for now. Bye.